mommy over there on the camera. Hi, how are you? I hope you're having a great day. Okay, so that last video that I did was a difficult topic for me. It brought back memories of my mom who needed opiates in her later years. And I encouraged her to take them just so she could function. She had neuropathy and congestive heart failure. And it was hard for me to watch her suffer so much. And I knew her time was limited. But we can live a long life with fibromyalgia. It's not always fun or enjoyable, but there's a whole wide world to enjoy. So let's enjoy it. Today's topic is about testosterone and its effect on our body. Here we go. We know that there is a genetic predisposition to fibromyalgia that is responsible for about half of the risk of developing it. It's assumed that the other half is environmental, such as a physical injury, trauma, or virus. Yes. You were being a bad boy, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know it. When humans experience a sudden blast of unexpected cellular distress, it can prompt a dysfunction in the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, or HPA, and also neurological signaling. It can develop at any age. It can develop in women and men with a two to one ratio. Twice as many women are prone to fibromyalgia than men, according to the CDC. So a gender gap is apparent, but this effect only occurs after puberty. Prior to puberty, the ratio is equal. Women are more likely to acquire fibromyalgia during middle age. And all of this has caused many researchers to investigate sex hormones as a likely factor. But hormones can be a tricky subject when talking about fibromyalgia. And testosterone, well, it's confusing because testosterone is a hormone produced in the testes in men and ovaries in women. It's known as the male sex hormone because it plays a huge role in the growth and development of men during puberty, such as a deeper voice. In women, it plays a huge role in women's health. It creates new blood cells, improves bone density, improves muscle mass, decreases body fat, maintains libido, improves reproductive health, and regulates our hormones. So what's the difference between men and women's testosterone levels? Women produce a much smaller amount than men, but testosterone is found in almost all tissues in the female body. There are receptors called androgen or testosterone receptors. Healthy testosterone levels help to prevent metabolic disorders in women like type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, or metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of conditions that occur together that include high blood glucose, low levels of HDL cholesterol, high triglycerides, large waist circumference, and high blood pressure. You need three or more for a diagnosis, but losing weight, cutting sugar intake, and healthy eating will help to get those numbers back in line. 
I had a menopause hormone test taken in May of 2020. Here's my result. They didn't check my testosterone levels, which surprises me. So I think I'll talk to my doctor about this when I see her next. Testosterone levels in women are 10 times higher than estrogen levels and are involved in the menopausal journey. Low testosterone levels can decrease energy levels in women and men, like feeling incredibly tired throughout the day. But normal aging and depression can cause the same effect. Low T, low testosterone, can cause mental focus to decrease. Or you may feel depressed or down. But a change in personality can occur in men and women Muscle mass changes, and you can gain excess weight around your waist that you didn't have before. But as you lose weight, your body will make more testosterone. Hair will thin out, especially in men. Bones weaken, and you can develop osteoporosis. You may have trouble sleeping soundly, and libido decreases. Of course, other conditions can cause the same effects, so you always want to talk to your doctor. A blood test can measure your testosterone levels if you think yours is low. In women, testosterone levels peak in their 20s and decline through the menopause years. In average, testosterone levels decrease by 50% by a woman's mid-50s. And let's not forget, a female can also have high testosterone levels. If that occurs, it could be because of various diseases or hormonal disorders. These include hirsutism, polycystic ovary syndrome, or congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Please seek treatment for these conditions. Oral contraceptives are known to block testosterone. Lifestyle changes can also affect testosterone levels like exercise or weight loss. Fibromyalgia is more prevalent in women with dysmenorrhea than women without dysmenorrhea, which is painful menstrual cramps unless they are taking contraceptives. I found this deeply interesting because a year before I stopped taking contraceptives, I was 49 years old and was taking contraceptives because of premenopausal symptoms, my fibromyalgia symptoms began. And then a year later, when I was 50 and stopped taking them, Menopause began. Is that a weird coincidence? Probably not. It's thought that there's a protective role of testosterone in the body. A pilot study of 12 subjects with fibromyalgia investigated the therapeutic action of transdermal testosterone gel. The results showed a significant reduction of pain and fatigue symptoms in proportion to the increase of serum testosterone concentration serum. Sex hormones can deeply interact with pain modulation on multiple levels involving central and peripheral nociceptive cells, microglia, and opioid systems. In addition, cortisol seems to interact with progesterone to influence pain perception, and it appears that progesterone acts as an anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective, and analgesic agent. However, estradiol in pain modulation is unresolved due to its anti-nociceptive and pro nociceptive agents. So regarding this information, 
progesterone and testosterone supplementation could ameliorate fibro symptoms because of their anti-inflammatory and painkiller functions. But they're also involved in stress response since they're a steroid hormone like cortisol. Progesterone is made by the adrenal glands in response to a stressor in men and women and is a precursor to cortisol biosynthesis. So it could mean that with lower levels of circulating progesterone, less cortisol is made. It is believed that people with fibromyalgia and ME-CFS have low cortisol levels. Perhaps this is part of the equation. I've only touched the surface of this subject, but I think this gives us a lot to think about. Always talk to your doctor. If you are suspicious about your hormone levels and whether doing anything about it is something for you. I've also talked about the subject of male and female hormones here. So I hope you like this topic. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you.